not that one defense mechanism is a foolproof solution. So sometimes you have to have a combination of the different uh, defense mechanisms in order to be uh, very robust against attacks. And that's what that's a typical strategy. But we'll see one by one, and sometimes we'll try to put together more than one mechanism. Okay. All right. So we'll start with uh, using uh, cryptographic uh, techniques. And uh, they alone cannot be uh, uh, a robust solution. So you have to combine this, as we'll see, with other uh, techniques also. Uh, so we'll have another 13 minutes. So I'm going to just kind of review uh, some basics of uh, outline again, uh, uh, the cryptographic techniques. And we'll come back next time and look at uh, the mechanism that makes use of these things. OK. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure how many of you have a cryptography background, so I'm going to just to uh, introduce some terminologies and uh, I encourage you to go through this, especially if you are not familiar with the cryptography before we come for next class. Let me make sure I'm recording, that's why I'm going back and forth. Okay, yes, I'm recording. All right, so uh, we want to do encryption typically uh, to provide three things. So it's called also the CIA. It means you want to provide confidentiality, integrity, and authentication. Uh, so what does confidentiality mean? So confidentiality means you want to uh, provide some, uh, whatever the information you're sending, you want to make it secret so that no one other than the intended receiver uh, knows, uh, sees what is the message you are sending. So that's confidentiality. So trying to make things secret. And what is integrity? So integrity means you want to make sure the message you are sending is not being changed by anyone. So that is what is meant by integrity. Now authentication means uh, the receiver should be able to make sure it is receiving the message from who um, it uh, appears to have come from. So this is where IP spoofing and all these things also come. So the receiver should be able to authenticate the sender that okay it is appears to come from the sender and it should be able to make sure it does come from that uh, sender who claims to have sent that message so that is authentication so you you want basically all the three but sometimes there is a trade off you cannot cannot achieve accomplish all the three you have to kind of balance balance means compromise on one and accomplish the other and so on so uh, we'll see the details uh, as we proceed now, um, now when it comes to what is called encryption, you want to uh, send some text, you call it a plain text. And if you just send it as a plain text, uh, just say the character, say Apple, is that what you want to send? If you just send Apple as it is, anyone who listens to the channel, like you saw the last attack, can find out what you're sending. So you want to kind of do some encryption of the information you're sending. So nobody, if some, even someone looks at the message, they'll not be able to figure out what it is that you are sent. So it is the receiver who should be able to do what's called decrypt the message and find out what is being sent. Now you can do it two ways in a broad sense. It's called, you can do it using what is called symmetric encryption techniques and asymmetric encryption techniques. Now in symmetric encryption, uh, of course, to do both of this kind of encryption, you use some key. Uh, that should be kind of known only to the sender and receiver. So in the symmetric encryption, you encrypt the plain text with a key and generate what is called a cipher text. So when some common person looks at the cipher text, they, they won't be able to figure out what it is. So Apple will be sent as say H, J, T, Y, D or something, it depends on how you do the encryption. So when I look at that sequence of characters, I cannot figure out what is being sent. So now, if you want to decrypt it, you, you have to use the same key to decrypt and get back the original plain text. So if the same key is used for both encryption and decryption, it's called symmetric encryption. Now if you use one key for encryption and another key for decryption, that's called asymmetric encryption. So basically indicating you use two different keys at each side. Now, of course, you cannot use two random keys. The encryption key and the decryption key should be related to each other. So typically, we use what is called public key encryption technique, uh, where um, each user will, use, will have a public key as well as a private key. 
So the public key of a user is known to everyone. Okay, so it's like an email address for a user. So I know the email address of somebody out there. But the private key of the user should be known only to that user. Nobody else should know the private key of the user. So the private key is something like the password for the email account. So I know that person's email address, but I don't know that person's password. Okay, so something like that. Just like, you know, a, a very broad comparison to understand what's the difference between the public key and private key. So the thing is, you should know is public key of a user is known to everyone and private key of the user is known only to that user. So given that, you could do something like this. You could encrypt a message, say the plain text, with the public key of the uh, receiver. Okay. So you could encrypt a message with the public key of the receiver and send it. Now, that means nobody else sh should be able to decrypt the message except the receiver because, uh, okay, this is the relationship. So, you if you encrypt the message with the public key of the receiver, you can decrypt the message only with the private key of the receiver. Okay, so that's the relationship between the two keys. So, if you encrypt with the public key of some user, you have to decrypt the message with the private key of the same user. So, the sender will know only the public key of the receiver. So all the sender can do is he can encrypt the message with the public key of the receiver. And that means only the receiver can decrypt with his private key because only the receiver should know his private key. So the first, uh, set, uh, first um, scenario I have given here provides us what? Confidentiality because nobody else will be able to find out what is in the plain text because it has been encrypted and sent on the channel and uh, nobody else can decrypt other than the receiver. So the first uh, scenario provides us confidentiality. Now, does it provide us authentication? Can we make sure that with this first uh, way of doing encryption, that the message comes from a particular sender? No, because authentication means the receiver wants to make sure it comes from a particular sender. That's not possible because anyone who knows the public key of the receiver could come up with a message and send that to the receiver. So, the receiver cannot uh, kind of verify or authenticate that the message came from the particular sender. So, let us see another way to do this encryption. I can generate the plain text and encrypt that with my private key, with the sender's private key. And I am the only one to know my private key. So, uh, uh, I encrypt with the sender's private key and then the message goes to the receiver. Now, the receiver should know my public key, right? Because everyone knows the public key of everybody else. So, the receiver should know the public key of the sender and should be able to decrypt the message and find out what uh, is in the message. So, now, if the receiver uses a wrong public key, or let us look at the other way. So, uh, with a straightforward approach, the, the original sender encrypted with his private key and sent it. The receiver applied the appropriate sender's public key and uh, opened the decrypt of the message and read it. So, that's fine. So, now think about it. It provides us authentication. Why? Because can anyone else do this? Can any, uh, someone can come up with a message, but can that person encrypt with my private key? No, because nobody else should know my private key. So, if somebody comes up with a message and tries to come uh, encrypt that with a private key uh, of some other sender, that's not possible, right? So, it is only that intended sender can send the message. Now, if Still, somebody comes up with a message and encrypts with their own private key and does say IP spoofing and sends a message to the receiver. Uh, the receiver will think that the message comes from wherever the IP address belongs to. And if the IP address corresponds to some other sender, the receiver will try to apply the public key corresponding to that sender. But the private key used does not correspond to that public key because the attacker used his own private key and the receiver is trying to decrypt the message with the public key of the a genuine sender. So the public key and private key won't correspond to the same user, right? So what the at, uh, receiver will decrypt and see is not what the attacker uh, really wanted to send, okay? 
so this way you can kind of make sure that the, and if receiver knows what it's expecting from the sender especially it will be able to figure out that this is not what is expecting from the sender and later we'll see some more uh, foolproof mechanism of doing this uh, authentication but the second scenario kind of provides us authentication but to think about it does it provide as uh, what is called this confidentiality no even if a genuine sender encrypts a message with his private key and sends out anyone who receives that message on the channel can decrypt to the sender's public key and see what is in the message right so this second scenario does not provide us confidentiality whereas it provides us only authentication whereas the first one provides us only confidentiality not authentication so that's the kind of trade off that we have to realize here uh, so sometimes you can achieve only one and not the other so we'll stop with this and come back and see how to accomplish combination of things so we'll slowly increase the complexity and see how to accomplish all the three together okay so this is very important and especially if you don't have a cryptographic background go to the slides before uh, we start next class okay so if you have any questions in the meantime